Hello, my absolutely beautiful Capricorn friends, and welcome to your horoscope for December of 2023. And let me start off by saying happy, happy birthday, Capricorn. It is your time. Yay, this is very exciting. And just to make sure you're having the best birthday ever, we're going to also have Mercury going retrograde in your sign this month, along with Neptune coming direct and Jupiter coming direct in the vibration of Taurus as well. And all of it is just a cosmic conspiracy, Capricorn to help you live your best life. The universe is kind. It is loving. And I want to remind you that at birthday time this year, but I also just want to say happy birthday. So Capricorn, as we're going to get going this month, first and foremost, I want to bring your attention to the fact that in November on the 25th, we had Mercury go into pre-retrograde shadow time at 22 degrees of Sagittarius, okay? So we're watching between 22 degrees of Sagittarius and eight degrees of Capricorn. And this is going to be where we're going to see this retrograde story unfold for us this time all the way until January 20th. So it's important that you grab your chart, you take a look at where this is actually landing on your chart so that you can see exactly what your particular story is because it's going to help you make a lot more sense of the astrology that is unfolding okay so right as we get into the month on the first we've got mercury moving into your sign into the energy of capricorn and it's going to be here really all the way until we get through January because we have to go through the retrograde with this as well. But as Mercury comes into your sign today, it's bringing new information. Okay. And it's bringing new information about what? About you. Decisions that you need to make about yourself. Things you're being called to task to, to bring your focus to. What are you willing to commit yourself to do? How are you looking to get organized? What decisions are you making in your own life that are realistic? They're realistic plans forward. You know, things going on in your life about maybe either having or being a teacher or getting or having a teacher in your life, whatever it is, Mercury is bringing to your attention the need to make some decisions about your responsibilities and accountabilities at this particular time. Now, one thing I do want to share with you is that it's fine If you've got a contract going on or you had to renegotiate a contract or something like that, you may actually find that you're having to do that renegotiation work during the Mercury retrograde. But at this particular time, I will tell you, make sure you are reading all the fine print, you are going over everything twice just to be sure as you're getting your plan started and you're getting something really realistic and long-term in place for yourself in terms of communication, okay? On the fourth, we see Venus entering into Scorpio, which is gonna light up your 11th house space of friends, social groupings, social media, but it's also the house of your long range desires and aspirations for yourself. So as Venus enters this energy, it's an attracting energy. So it's attracting to you, attracting to you, attracting to you. And what it will attract to you is exactly what you are, right? Or exactly what you are attempting to be. Because Scorpio is not working at a superficial level at all. It's working into the deep. So you can know that through and through what is being attracted to you at this time is in exact alignment with your vibration. And sometimes that can feel really extreme or really intense to hear that because this is the vibration of Scorpio. But it can also be really like, you know, wonderfully romantic, something you're wonderfully passionate about. Venus can call in money from this area. Have you been passionate about working on something in social media or your friends have been working on something or maybe you're really deeply connected to a social group that really you have a lot of intense and immense love for? So it can be as deeply engaging as that. It at the same time can be attracting you to... um, someone in a social group or a social setting that you have a little bit of interest in. And that's kind of exciting. Now, the one thing you do want to be mindful of, I think, with Venus here in Scorpio is that, you know, the nostalgia that happens at the end of the year is so delicious. It's so beautiful, but it's also a great place for emotional vampires to find you 
And if you're vulnerable to it, to be preying on you. So I want you to be absolutely mindful of that as we're traveling at the end of this year, okay? Because the last thing you want to go into 2024 with is a relationship that has started in chaos or that is leaving you more confused than in peace. As we get to the 6th, we see Neptune turning direct at 24 degrees of Pisces, having gone retrograde at 27 degrees of Pisces back in June. Now, as Neptune is direct, let's talk about this because this is in your third house, okay? As Neptune is direct, you're kind of able to go between reality and and the ethers, right? It's reality and daydream. And you can dance back and forth there. And I think that humans need that. Sometimes we need a break because when it's just all reality all the time, that's very, very heavy to carry. And it's not really a place where we can envision the next version of ourselves or envision the next place on the journey, right? So as Neptune went direct, it was all reality all the time from June until now in December, which means means that like anything that you had that was like a false reality, it was an illusion, it was a delusion, it was a dream, you had a vision or you had an ideal around it and it wasn't really real, it's required a fair amount of your change during this retrograde. And sometimes the seeing of the reality, the stripping of that daydreamy energy can be a little bit painful. So if what you've experienced during this time has also been something a little bit painful, or you felt a bit bombarded or overwhelmed or paranoid, these kinds of things, or, you know, sometimes the self-pity runs absolutely rampant. This is something that you can know was really needed. Because Neptune is going to ask you and make very clear the reason why you need to develop at a spiritual level. Why do you need spiritual development? It's because in the face of just solid reality, if you're not who you believe yourself to be, and then the illusion of that gets stripped away, you've, you're left. You're left with some truth that's a little bit hard to swallow, right? And that can be in many ways because this is in the third house for you. So the third house has been about siblings, communication, things you've been studying or learning. Um, it's been about maybe buying or selling something like a car or a house or something like that, contracts, negotiations. So it's really like throughout the summertime, a lot of the stories or the self-deception was stripped away. And now as we're here in December, as Neptune comes direct, you're like, okay, I have seen some things <laughs> and now I can create a new belief system and a new idea and a new vision for myself that is really based out of spiritual maturity and spiritual development and got to tap into kind of that higher self or higher power energy if you're going to be able to move forward because if not all that's left is the story of self-pity victimization and all of that okay as we get to the 12th, we've got a new moon that's going to be happening at 20 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this is going to light up again your 12th house space. So at the new moon, you're going to be planting your seeds of intention to begin something new here, a new spiritual development, a new practice, a new enthusiasm, a willingness to be honest and go on a new adventure, to find your freedom based on a new belief structure and a new faith. But this is happening in the 12th house. So it's happening behind the scenes in the place that is quiet. This is the realm of the spirit for you. This is the space where we've got self-sabotage and your own undoing. And this is opening up, this new moon is opening up an opportunity for you to gain a bit of confidence in spiritual living, in creative living, in vulnerability and sharing your secrets and telling your truths. It's um, also going to be a time though that on the road to this development back here. This particular moon is in a square to that Neptune that's just recently come direct. So it's not happening as quickly as you would like it to. And I just want to tell you that up front, up front, it is not unfolding as quickly as you maybe would like it to. So I would say very quickly, please adjust expectations. Okay, stick close to your spiritual tribe or teachers, whichever is supporting you along the way. 
because that's going to help you see that, yes, you are braving a new land. You are going to, you know, move past and extend your horizons. And this is a really big deal, what you're taking on in terms of your spiritual belief, creativity, treatment of illnesses, all of these types of things, okay? When we get to the 13th, we're going to see Mercury step into the retrograde in your sign. This is where it begins the retrograde. So I'm telling you, if you needed to go back over a contract and go back over details, or you needed to go back to someone that you're in a relationship with and you need to have a conversation and say, oops, sorry, I messed that up. I wasn't clear about that. There's been a miscommunication, something like that. You just want to be mindful of it. Now, the one thing I would share with you that I think is really important is that as this Mercury retrograde is happening, remember Mercury retrograde has a tendency to bring back people, places, and things from the past. Because this is in your first house, it could be you attempting to go back to someone from the past. And just be very, very clear. If who you're going back to in the past is someone you should be going back to because they're going to bring something healthy into your life why you're going back to them is it to get relief for yourself or is it to be of service to them okay because whatever decisions you're making are going to probably have a long-term impact as we're traveling on the 21st we've got birthday time rolling in and on the stage so happy birthday with the sun entering into Capricorn so whatever needs to be done whoever you would like to be in this next year you're setting the stage here the sun's bringing light heat life and vitality to support you in making any of the changes that you're ready to make and to bring your authentic self out now on the 23rd we'll see that retrograde mercury move back to the vibration of Sagittarius so back into the 12th house zone if there is a person, place, or thing that has been going on behind the scenes, this may be a time for you to consider, reconsider Mercury retrograde, your beliefs, your ideas, your understanding the truth about what's going on behind the scenes. Now, are you working on a project behind the scenes and later you're going to get ready to launch it out in public? Are you dating someone quietly behind the scenes and you guys are going to announce your relationship later in public? If it's one of these things that is like down the road, it has the opportunity to come honestly into the light you're going to have a better chance with that particular energy. If not, this is going to be a time for you to review your belief structure, review travel plans, even if you need to, you know, are you traveling someplace in secret? <laughs> are you going to sorted places in your mind? You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing behind the scenes? And just in case anybody needs this, because this is the Sagittarius vibration, if there's anything legal going on, this would be a time to review that as well. On the 26th, we've got a full moon happening at four degrees of Cancer, and this is just in the opposite sign for you, your relationship house. Now, the full moon says we need to end something, acknowledge something, or to make an adjustment and a course correction. And this particular full moon is in wonderful connection with both Jupiter and Saturn, which is wisdom and structure in terms of adding support for you. So, at this full moon, you're really being asked to look at your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships and if you're nurturing them. Are you nurturing your conscious chosen one-on-one -on -one relationships? Because if you are, it's going to produce success. It's going to produce the support that you need and the deeper connection that you're looking to have in your life. If not, this full moon may be telling you it's time to do that. And sometimes what that looks like is we just have this heartfelt understanding that it's like, yeah, I can connect deeper here or I'm willing and I want to make an adjustment and connect more deeply. And sometimes it's somebody in your relationship zone saying, I don't want to connect with you anymore. And we kind of get that reality check, right? So we would love for it to be the latter where you are just whatever it is you're having a revelation come to you, you're able to see it for what it is and make the necessary adjustments in order to balance out so you're not neglecting something and nurturing something else, but then you're not nurturing something so that you're neglecting something else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're looking for balance here, okay? On the 29th, we've got Venus entering into Sagittarius, now into that 12th house space. Again, Venus calling in, attracting in, attracting in, attracting in into the quiet, creative, behind the, the scenes space. So if you were putting out something in the esoteric, metaphysical field or space or something like that, this could be an absolute wonderful time for you because people would be readily receiving your products or your information or your teaching. Um, there could be financial benefit to it. This could also yet again be 
a connection to someone behind the scenes. So whatever it is that's happening for you with this Venus being here, remember it's an attracting and in, attracting and attracting in energy. And do your best to attract in the kind of connections you really want to go the distance with you as you travel through 2024 and beyond. Now, as we're going to close the month on the 30th, we've got Jupiter coming direct in the vibration of Taurus fellow Earth energy. And the thing to note and to keep in mind about um, Jupiter coming direct here is that it's for you at this time to really know that you're placing the bricks, right? This is the time where you're placing the bricks because as you walk and as you move forward into 2024, you're building this really solid structure that you can stand on. And it's something that you've already had. You didn't need to go get a new resource. You've already had it at your fingertips, right? Now it's simply been about you need to actualize them at this particular time, but it's right here. It's valuable to you. And you can also use this Jupiter and Taurus energy to apply wisdom. What have you learned or what are you teaching to someone else that's also helping you learn what you need to learn? Lots going on this beautiful month, Capricorn. I hope you enjoy your birthday. I hope you are considering all of the things that are happening for you and every day that is unfolding for you here as we travel throughout the last days of 2023. I love you a ton. I thank you for your time, your attention, and for traveling with me and letting me travel with you. And I look forward to our journey in 2024.